Hey everybody, welcome back to the Crafting Brothers. Today I'm going to show you how I built this incredible bridge. Or rather, how I screwed up building this incredible bridge. Stay tuned. Okay, so I made a mistake the very first second. When I started printing this bridge, I included ad supports everywhere. And, uh, you know, I'm new to the 3D printing world, but when you add supports everywhere, it puts supports literally on places that you don't want them to be. So it took a while. The bridge came out really cool, but it did take a while to clean up all of these little tiny pieces. And, of course, the first piece you notice is the large section underneath the arch of the bridge. And I, I pulled the other ones out fairly simple, but these last couple were just a problem. I tried cracking, I tried breaking, I tried everything I could think of strength-wise and it just wasn't coming out. I couldn't get these out. I wanted to just grab a hammer and bash this thing open but I knew that wasn't probably going to be a good thing. So what I ended up doing is I uh, just grabbed a crescent wrench and I worked them out so much that eventually they cracked so much in the middle I think they just kind of fell off. You can enjoy the cracking sounds, almost as if bones are breaking. Once I got the big, huge supports out, the next process was equally as annoying. I had to go through the entire piece and scrape off the little bits of supports that, that the machine put in between the bricks. And this just took forever. I scraped and I scraped and eventually I cleaned them all up, but it was a pain. Now you can see the final product without the support mess. It actually looks really cool. Now the next problem was the underneath sides of the bridge. I didn't know what I was going to do with that. And scraping it wasn't going to work. So I did the only thing that I could think of. Now the theory was to smooth them out and then change the tool and then re kind of redraw in the brick line with my Dremel tool. Didn't really work out the way I thought and eventually I just thought, you know what, when it's on the table no one's going to see the underside of the bridge anyway, so I just let it go. Now I took it outside and I used some black spray primer, just cheap stuff, and I gave it a coat of uh, black primer. And then I also gave it a second coat, just a little light coat of uh, Citadel Black. And that really actually helped in the paint job. So I took it back inside and I used E6000 to glue these plastic bits together. This is kind of my glue of choice when I'm gluing plastic because I think it works pretty good. It bonds really nice. So I stuck it together and realized, wait a minute, that's the wrong piece. And I unstuck it and then stuck it to the correct side of the bridge. Okay. One of the things that I love is being the lame guy that always shows you guys how not to do something. <laughs> well, that's what's happening right now because here's what happened. Uh, I always put my stuff out in the backyard after I paint it to dry. Well, turns out you can't really do that with 3D printed things because they warp in the sun. So my piece warped in the sun and I should have glued it together before I painted it. Um, again, I my mistakes are your benefit. So I don't know if you can see here, but... Um, it doesn't really fit correctly. Plus, I'm going to put it on the ground and show you some shots uh, with my iPhone of exactly how not level it is. 
So now I have to do a little work uh, post-production, but uh, it's still going to turn out fantastic. I love it. But as Matthew Colville would say, I am a river to my people. The Turks pay me a golden treasure, yet I am poor because I am a river to my people. And in true fashion, I think what I'm going to do is take it back outside. I'm going to put it in the sun and I'm going to let it level back down after it heats up and warps a little bit. I'm going to put something heavy on top and let it even out. I know you guys are probably thinking, huge mistake, but once again, that's just me. So there it is outside, and the only thing I had that was even close to heavy enough was this sledgehammer I found in the garage. And it actually, believe it or not, worked perfectly. Everything kind of leveled out and worked good. So I brought it back inside, and I began the process of cleaning up these mold lines. Now I'm using green stuff, and when I opened my package, I realized that's supposed to be green, right? <laughs> I don't know what color that is. But uh, I haven't used it, obviously, in a very long time, and it just did something weird. It ended up working, but it was kind of a strange texture that I was working with. So I rolled out a little piece, and I just kind of put it on the mold line that was messed up, and used a little sculpting tool to kind of fill in the lines. And then I painted it with some Citadel black paint just to match the uh, primer. Really? Really? I suck. Well, you know what? When you uh... you make do with what you have, <laughs> that's hilarious. So after that messy little fiasco, I just gave the entire thing a nice little coat of pewter gray, which is a darker gray. And I, again, I, I like to leave a little bit of the black underneath showing through. So it looks pretty good so far. Then I made sure to carry over those gray stone lines into the inside as well. After that, I gave the entire middle portion a coat of uh, nutmeg brown. And this was going to simulate kind of the dirt if people were traveling on this bridge. It's a kind of a well-traveled bridge. So this is going to be the dirt in between the uh, stones. The next step I wanted to do was use a little uh, lighter blue and I mixed it with some gray here. And what I wanted to do was uh, just bring out these archway uh, tiles, these archway little bricks to make them kind of pop out and I think it looks pretty good. And the next thing I did was I picked out a bunch of little bricks here and there throughout the bridge, no pattern. I just wanted it to look like some of the bricks were just a little bit different than the other ones. So after that, I gave everything on top a coat of gray. I gave it a, a pewter gray kind of heavy dry brush. And then I gave the entire thing a dry brush of granite gray. Now in the middle of this whole thing, I realized that I didn't have a, a very good wash for this type of terrain. So I called up Black Magic Crafts how to make a better wash video. And I made a wash with uh, water, uh, acrylic medium, some flow aid, and just a little bit of black ink. And it turned out really nice. And I gave the whole thing a wash. And it really brings out the detail of this bridge. Now I wanted to give everything a little bit more realism. So I grabbed some regular old glue all. And I began to spread it throughout the brick lines as if moss was growing in between the bricks. And I kept the moss to the archways because I wanted it to look like water was flowing underneath the bridge. The next thing I did was go over to my brother's house and he actually helped me and he made me some tufts of grass, homemade tufts of grass. And I'm sure he'll do a video on this coming up, but it was really helpful because I took these tufts and I just placed them randomly all throughout the bridge and it came out absolutely fantastic.
thanks for going on this journey with me, you guys. I know it was a long haul, but uh, we got over all those hurdles, and I think it came out great. I'm not sold just yet on the 3D printed terrain, but uh, I think I'm going to try it again, and next time I'm going to maybe build something bigger and better, and I'm going to do it right, so stay tuned. We'll see you soon.